Number 13 then from paper one of the National 5 2018. Just two marks here for a little depth perception test here. It tells you some facts about this triangular prism. It tells you that AD is equal to AE, so that's isosceles. It tells you that DC is 8. Now we'll need that, we'll put that in there. And it tells you that these edges, EF, AB and DC, are all parallel to the y-axis. What are the coordinates of B and C? Just for one mark each. Well, what do we know about it? Well, B is at the top level with A, and it's parallel along the y-axis with A, so it's definitely 5 up, and it's definitely 4 along. Those parts will be the same. How far back is it? Well, that's the 8, isn't it? So that should be 4, 8, 5. Now, what about C? Well, C is at ground level, so that's got a zero for the Z coordinate, the height coordinate. You can see it's eight back in the Y direction. So that just leaves how far along is it? It's obviously more than two. Well, that's isosceles. So if you were to drop a perpendicular, it would bisect the base, which means from two to the middle is two, so that must be another two beyond that, so that takes it to six. C must be the point, six, eight, zero. Number 14 then, from paper one of the 2018 National Five, change the subject of a formula for three marks. Change the subject of this formula to x. Well, x is on this side just now. Let's reverse it all and put it on the sunny side of equal to sign. So, g root x plus h will equal y. Now, it's just a case of get rid of all the bits and pieces until you eventually end up with x. Well, that h, that can go first. It's added. So take it across and subtract. That leaves just g root x now. That's multiplying. Take it across and divide. And of course, when it divides, it divides everything that was waiting in this side, not just a part of it. And finally, how do you get rid of that square root? Square it. So square both sides. Now, there's two ways you could write that. You could put the whole thing squared and that would be perfectly satisfactory as the answer, in fact, that's where I'm going to leave it. Or, you could separate it into the two parts, but I don't know that that necessarily looks any better to do that. You might have smaller little brackets, but you've had to have two squares in it. So I'm just going to stick with this one. Because the three marks would probably be dealing with the H, dealing with the G, and dealing with the square root. Number 15 then, from paper one of the 2018 National 5 Maths. Two marks for, just remove the square from that bracket. Much the same way as number 14 ended. Right, so we're going to square that out. Now the bracket means everything inside it's getting squared. Or you can think the squared is meaning it's the bracket times itself, whichever way you like. Either way around, the two's going to be squared, the 3 is going to be squared, and the p to the 4 is going to be squared. Well, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, and p to the 4 squared isn't 6, because it's p to the 4 times p to the 4. There's going to be 8 of those p's there. And that's it. Nothing simplifies any further, so there it is. Number 16 then from paper 1 of the 2018 National 5 Maths. It's only three marks here, but it's asking you to sketch this graph and show where it cuts the x-axis, where it cuts the y-axis, and where its turning point is. That seems a little bit mean. I mean, fair enough, you haven't had to factorise it to find that. Well, we'll start off, usually start with the y-axis, but it's easier now that the factorise that to take the x-axis first. So, it cuts the x-axis when y is zero. And since it's already been factorised equal to zero, you know the two numbers. Either x is six, if that bracket is zero, or x is negative four. So I could put them in, just approximately. There's the six, there's the negative four. Where does it cut the y-axis? Well, if you're on the y-axis, x is zero. 
So y is going to be, and you don't need to multiply it back out to do that. That's an identical expression. It's easier to do the arithmetic with that. I'll just put them in. If x is 0, that's 0 minus 6, which is, of course, is negative 6. If x is 0, that's 0 plus 4, which is just 4. So it's negative 6 times 4, which is negative 24. Obviously, we'll be using a different scale now for this point. So this is down at negative 24. The last part is, where's the turning point? Well, you need to know one of the coordinates in order to use that equation, but you do know the x-coordinate because the parabola is symmetrical. So you have to think, what's halfway between negative 4 and 6? You can either say they're 10 apart, so go back 5, so it's going to happen at 1, forward 5. Or you could add them together, the way you do to get the median. That comes to 2 and half it, that's 1. But in either event, I know x is 1. Now that you know one of the coordinates, put it into this so you can find the other one. So if x is 1, what's y equal to? You don't need to multiply it out, just use it in this form. 1 minus 6, and that'll be 1 plus 4. So you've got, that's negative 5 now. And that's 5, so that's negative 25. So it's just a wee bit lower than that. So it's down here. There's the turning point at 1, negative 25. Then sketch it through there, hopefully making a better job of it, a neater looking job than that.